One of my favorite things to look at for these sorts of videos are the flat earthers observations. They always, and I mean always, think they have found some sort of gotcha. And they are always, and I mean always, embarrassingly wrong. But could one of the flat earth old guard uncovered an exception that goes against the rule? Well, no. And as it turned out, he totally debunked himself. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a huge thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Extra Wallets. Extra is known for inventing the first trackable wallet. And now they're on a mission to upgrade the rest of your carry essentials with sustainable wallets, bags and accessories that help you get the most out of your day. Now it's half the size of a conventional wallet, but it carries over 12 cards plus cash. And these are the things that I think make it really, really good. You can access all your cards and cash at a click of a button with this signature mechanism here. It's got built-in RFID blocking, and that protects you from data theft and wireless skimming. It's made from environmentally friendly materials too, like vegan Italian leather and space-grade aluminium. And the awesome solar power tracking device lets you track your wallet's location from your phone. You can also use the two-way ringing feature on it and get separation alerts too. And two hours in the sun for this will get you three months of charge. Now, extra having an anniversary sale, where you can get 20% off, but with my code, you can get 25% off. All you gotta do is click that link in the description and use my code SIMANDAN to get your 25% off. Right, on with today's video, which comes from someone who's been banging on about Flat Earth for a very long time. His name is James Mann. He's a big fan of Delve from Beyond the Imaginary Curve. And he thinks he's got an observation which doesn't match what the curve calculators say. We've heard that one before, James. But before we begin with it, I just want to read you the description of his video. Take a look at this. People who choose to laugh, mock and fight in Flat Earth without ever trying to prove what they believe shows these people are still controlled by their public school programming and daily reinforcement of that programming. They show they are locked into and unwilling to research. It's just that simple. If you don't do your own research and choose to use other people's work as your truth, you show yourself to be a hypocrite and that you are not even honest with yourself. Make the choice to research. Anything else is just avoiding the truth. Keep those words in your mind as we go through this video, everyone. Let's do this. Hello. James Mann back with a quick video to show you just how easy it can be to disprove the predictions made by Earth curvature calculators. Okay, well that's definitely not James Mann's voice, unless he's been taken over by some sort of AI. Note that we flat earthers did not create the Earth curvature calculators. No, because you wouldn't know where to start, would you? These things are actually supposed to match reality, especially when looking over water, which does not bend. Today my camera is at Fundy Park, New Brunswick, 100 feet above sea level. I am looking to Isle Oat, 24 miles away from my camera. I was also able to see the mainland of Nova Scotia 38.6 miles away. Let's see what these earth curvature calculators predict from my camera position. Okay, so he's explained the initial setup. Fine. He's at Fundy Park and he's looking at an island called Hort. Seems simple enough so far. Before I show you the curvature predictions, let's watch a short clip showing what I was able to see with a little zoom. Fundy Park at Alma, New Brunswick looking 24 miles to Isle Oat, and more than 40 miles to Nova Scotia's mainland. Here is a photo of Isle Oat. Now let me show you what we are looking at. The island is 24 miles away from my camera, and it's 328 feet high in the center. The point on the left is 90 to 100 feet high. The point on the right end of the island is only 60 feet where it drops off. Now let me show you the predictions made by Earth Curvature Calculators, which are based on a globe Earth with a radius of 3,959 miles. Okay, let's test those figures first, shall we? First off, it is indeed 328 feet high at its highest point. Well done there. It's a good start. And secondly, the distance seems to be correct too, certainly to the centre of our, the island of Hort. I'm not convinced about your values for either side of the island though. On the left, the island drops from 70 meters or 230 feet 
to about 10 meters or 32 feet. And on the right, it drops from 75 meters or 246 feet to 10 meters again, which is around 32 feet. Crucially though, if you look at photos of Isle Hort, you can see that there is a large sandbar on the left as you look at it, James. Now, that appears to be missing from your footage. Not a bad start, but could be a bit better, buddy. Again, my camera is 100 feet above sea level, looking 24 miles to Isle Hort. According to Globe Math, my personal horizon starts dropping away at 12 miles. The Globe prediction calculators say there is 92 feet of curvature, which is disproven by the fact we see the drop off on the right point, at no more than 60 feet above sea level. So, the location of the viewer is where we're going to look next. James says the elevation of that is 100 feet, so let's check that out. Now for this, I used some of my GeoGuessr skills. So I went into the park and started looking around on Google Earth. Now I noticed some wooden barriers which looked familiar and then went back into Google Street View and found this photo. When I look around, I see these red chairs. And when you look at James's video, you can see there is a frame with a red chair arm in the corner. I had found the exact spot where he'd taken that footage. And if you see from Google Earth, that is 31 meters in elevation. Now, if we add the 1.5 meter height of James actually holding the camera, we get a viewer height of 32.5 meters, which is 106 feet, not 100 feet. This disproves any measurable curvature looking to 24 miles. Well, let's use a proper curve calculator, shall we? One which takes refraction into account. We plug all that info we have into that, a distance of 24 miles and a viewer height of 106 feet, and we get a refracted hidden value of around 61 feet. Now, if we look at that right side of the island again, we actually cannot see the lower ground, which remember is 32 feet. And let's remember the highest point on that right side is 246 feet. So we're seeing pretty much exactly what we're supposed to see, James. The points being visible on the island disproves measurable curvature to 24 miles. However, it gets worse for the globe math as we are able to see the mainland of Nova Scotia, 32 miles away. Oh, can we? And why exactly is this worse for the globe? Because it's actually worse for you. There should be 315 feet of curvature just to the shoreline, where the land is 200 feet high. The 315 foot high land is 36.3 miles, which now calls for 376 feet of curvature. This was actually close to matching predictions, and is where globe believers would say it matches the globe model and call it quits. Truthers are willing to go the extra mile, as I will show you at the other end of the island, looking to the mainland of Nova Scotia. Well, let's tackle this bit first, shall we? I've drawn a second line on Google Earth that looks just to the left of the island as you look at it, James. I've drawn it to the highest point inland of Nova Scotia, which is 197 meters. You can see it on Google Maps. Now that is 646 feet. Now those peaks are 39.6 miles away, so if we pop that into our curve calculator, we get a hidden value of 385 feet. This means over 300 feet of Nova Scotia should be visible. Now, that almost 300 feet that should be visible is more than the 200 feet that should be visible of Isle Hort. Yet that 300 foot land sits lower than the 200 foot land. In what scenario would that happen, James? One in which the Earth is curving away from you, perhaps? Oh dear, you've literally debunked yourself with your own video. Quite extraordinary. He has more though, everyone. The mainland, at this end of the island, is Margaretsville, 38 miles to the shoreline where the land is less than 200 feet above sea level. The curvature prediction to 38 miles is 376 feet of globe curvature. That's 170 feet of missing curvature. So how far is it to land 376 feet high? It is another 3 miles to 370 feet, which is 41 miles, and that changes the prediction to 551 feet of curvature. So again I have to find where 550 feet is. I had to go further inland to 50 miles to find 500 feet and now the globe math prediction is 950 feet of predicted earth curvature. There is no land on this line of sight 950 feet high. Okay, let's do the right side of the island as well, just to neaten it all up and make sure we've got it correct. 
Now I managed here to find a line that intersected land 138 meters in elevation, and that's 452 feet. Now that high point was 41.89 miles away, and it gave us a hidden height value of 456 feet. So given the conditions, you could absolutely see a tiny little slither of land from your position. Another fail there, James. The land to the right is even further away, demanding even more predicted globe curvature, which cannot be found. I have shown there is zero measurable curvature to match the predictions made by these earth curvature calculators, which were created by deceivers like Mick West and Walter Bislin. Except you haven't showed that, and as usual, your research, remembering James's initial video description at the beginning, was found wanting. The red line is 5 miles long, going from Margaretsville 38 miles away and Port George 42 miles away. That's an extra 4 miles. Earth curvature calculators predict 590 feet of earth curvature just to the shoreline which is less than 200 feet high. That is 390 feet of missing curvature, just to the shoreline. Yes, but you're obviously not looking at the shoreline, are you? There are hills well in excess of 750 feet in elevation in parts of Nova Scotia. What I really want you to understand is that I disproved the predicted amount of curvature made by earth curvature calculators. I also want you to realize that water doesn't bend, when at rest it will always be level. The globe model, and those photos of Earth from space, show Earth as a perfect sphere, and that sphere has to have predictable curvature based on a radius claimed to be 3,959 miles. Using the globe curvature calculators we flat Earth researchers prove there is no measurable curvature to these distances. If you are a believer in the heliocentric globe model it is time to start researching on your own. I say that with love, so please don't take it the wrong way. I just showed how easy it can be to show Earth lacks the predicted curvature. Don't argue points you have never taken the time to prove on your own. Those who created the programming we were fed as children are counting on those people following the programming instead of researching. They know most will never test what they were taught. And I want you to understand, James, that you have scored a massive, massive own goal. Just to prove this further, if you work out what the angular sizes of these pieces of land should be, then you actually work out at almost 0.08 degrees each. So now I've removed perspective from the equation. If the Earth was indeed flat, they should appear to be very, very similar heights, i.e. the same angular size. But they're not. The one further away is literally going over the curve. Well, what do we all think of that one, everyone? A massive, massive self-debunking from James Mann there. Pop a little celebratory comment down below if you wish, and I actually think I will send this one to James and see what he thinks. But for now, we are all done, debunked, and dusted. Is that gonna stick, that one? Oh, I don't know, maybe. Thanks so much for watching. It truly is, as ever, appreciated from you all. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel and, of course, hitting that thumbs up button too. Just enough time to once again thank Exeter for sponsoring today's video. Remember, if you click the link in the description and use my code SIMANDAN, you can get 25% off. I've been SIMANDAN. Have yourselves a great day, and I'll see you all tomorrow for the next Saturday session. See you then.